Good morning, everyone. My name is Sharif Balawi, and I'm an MD program student. Follow your dreams. You can go on Google. You can type the word dream, and you're going to get so many different kind of quotes, motivational words, that will try to motivate you to follow your dream, achieve your goals, and walk a further mile for that. Like every one of you, just before graduating from high school, I had so many dreams. I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a cop. I wanted to be Superman somehow. And I also wanted to be in the WHO, the World Health Organization. And I wanted to be in the United Nations. So many different dreams. Everyone is in a different field. And it's a bit difficult to join all of them together. So my journey starts in 2010, where I joined Sultan Qaboos University. And for a true fact, the first two years were the worst two years of my life. I literally hated it. It got to a point I was depressed. I did not know what to do. Seeing my friends traveling abroad, and I'm staying in the country. They're having fun, and I'm here doing the same things that I was doing all my life. And it came to a point where I didn't actually know what to do next. At the sec end of second year, my brother graduated from high school. Now, my brother is not just a sibling to me. He was more than that. He was my best friend. He was the guy who was always my partner in crime. And actually, I could not live without him. He affected my life so much that we did everything together. So the moment he got accepted to go to the UK, that's when I was really depressed. I literally wanted to quit medicine. Not just because of that, but also my studies. I was not doing well in my studies. Actually, I was never an A student. More than that, it came to a point where I started thinking, am I in the right profession? Am I doing the right career that I want to do for the rest of my life? Medicine, maybe yes, maybe not. So I started thinking. Maybe I should also quit. And I have spoke to my parents about this. And they were against the idea totally. But against their will, I went and I applied for London University. I applied for business, something totally different, not related to medicine. And I was like, so what? I'll study at, at least I'll study abroad, and I won't be in the country. But then in 2012, In 2012, at the end of my second year, I was also introduced to the International Federation of Medical Students Association, representing it in Oman, the national membership organization of the medical student group. It's a federation that was founded in 1951. It has more than 124 national membership organizations all around the world in different five regions. And it also unites 1.3 million 1.3 million medical students. So I started loving it. I started loving the fact that it is changing me and bringing me back to medicine. And also, it has this influence to me that I could do something. I could achieve my dreams, achieve my goals. One of the dreams that I had is to be in the World Health Organization. The International Federation was a main partner with the World Health Organization. So Maybe I could take that path and achieve a dream over there. It started with a passion. And I started working more and more, getting to know more about this federation, getting to know more about the activities that they do, how creativity medical students can be, how fun they can be, and most importantly, how do they party hard. But that's just one part of it. But it affects on you how can you develop how can you be a future public health advocator? How can you contribute in the medical education that you teach? And many students will follow on that. And this is how you keep on continuing, and you start growing, and you think that you can change something. You come to the point that all, I think all physicians and doctors uh, have in mind that they can make a change. They can achieve something. So I started having these different kind of dreams. 
And then I was introduced to this, the golden circle method. This was presented in TED Talks by Sam Sink. It's basically simple. He was talking about an Apple product, how Apple sells their product. You have the why, which is why you need this product. And then you have the how. How are you going to use it? And eventually, what is the product? So I started loving the idea. So I said, OK, why don't I use this and apply it on my dreams? What were my dreams? And why do I have these dreams? How and I'm, gonna, I'm going to achieve those dreams? And eventually, what I'm going to get from it? At the beginning, it was all of fun. I, elect, I, I ran for the uh, position, the National Exchange Officer. So basically, all what I did is taking care of exchange students coming from abroad and the exchange students from Oman leaving abroad. It was going all well at the beginning, but then I had the biggest shock. I failed in my studies. I repeated a whole year, and most of my friends don't even know this, but I somehow break down. I thought that, yeah, maybe this is it. This is over for me, game over, time to do something else. Now, logically, whenever we have troubles with our studies, we tend to leave everything else that we have and just focus on our studies, right? We always like to be in the safe zone and not just leave it because we think it is better. We think we, we won't get distracted. But actually, I took it in a different way. I took this as a challenge. So the year following that, I've decided not to quit the extracurricular activities. So I ran for the presidency of the National Membership Organization. At the same time, I had my studies. But this time, it was a bit tough with my studies because if I did not pass that year, I won't have the choice to study medicine or not study medicine, but I will be kicked out of the college, simply. So what I did is I tried to sort myself out. So as we males tend to be closer to our mothers, so I ran to my mother. And then I've asked my mother, what should I do? So she told me a story of this young, of this successful man. Back in his youth, when he was studying abroad, there was this bed that he had. Okay. Now, I think most of you know the bunk bed, right? Right, people? OK, good. Now, logically, you want to go on the bed on top. It is more fun. You get to climb. You get to jump. And you get to be happy somehow using it. It's, it's sort of entertainment when going to bed. But this guy, he did not take the bed on top. He took the bed in the lower level. Do you know that? Or do you know why is that? I've asked this question before. and different kind of answers. It's easier to get to bed. You won't fall while you're sleeping. It won't take you time to get out of the bed in the morning. But this guy took it in a different way. He started doing notes, writing his plans. What is, what is he going to do the next day? And how did he design his life? And he just stick it right on top of him. And those stuff that he wrote down were the stuff that where the first thing he sees every single day in the morning and the last thing that he sees before he goes to bed. This guy became out to be a great leader and a successor and did a lot for this country. This guy is Dr. Amr Rawas, former CEO of Amantel. Now, excellence, Leadership Excellence is a book that was published on him by the company itself. Because of what they saw in him, how a great person he was, how inf he influenced others, but he did not only think of himself. He think of the success of the others that were working with him. That's why you'll see a whole chapter in the book just for the people who he supported, and they've achieved their goals and dreams in life. In 2015, I finally finished my pre-clinical years. 
I was so happy that I've achieved one part of my dream, is studies, not getting kicked out of the college. So I decided to take things more differently. As I grew, and I were more passionate about the International Federation and the National Membership Organization here in Oman, and my enthusiasm about the World Health Organization. I was re-elected for the second time as the president for the National Membership Organization. I was elected as a member of the Student Council in Sultan Qaboos University and appointed as the head of the academic committee. And I was appointed by the IFMSA as the general assistant for the East Mediterranean region. And moreover, I was part of the IFMSA delegation to the World Health Organization Regional Committee meeting. Now I had so much stuff in mind and so many tasks to do, along with my own studies, somehow it becomes so hectic. At the beginning, with the adrenaline rush, you might be excited, oh yeah, I got this and I got that, I got this and I got that. But then you come to a point where you, you realize that there's so much that you have to take care of. So many commitments, so many responsibilities. And you need to take them all serious and make sure you fulfill them. So I took the easiest way, the classical way. Just get a big sheet of a paper and write everything down. I had everything that I'm going to do, not for the next day, not for the next week, not for the next month, but for the next 365 days. Everything just in one piece of paper in order to organize myself, in order to sort myself and do my task as I was supposed to. I had all the international meetings that I'm going to attend, all the deadlines that are important to submit my reports. I had my clinical rotations divided in the schedule, and I had the meetings that I'm going to conduct throughout the year. So this is an easy way just to sort yourself out in order to be organized and to not miss anything, and to also fulfill your, commi your commitments. With the work that you have, you would get to a point where you might think that you're at a risk, or you get this fear of taking a further step. You get this fear because you're not sure if you're the right person. You start doubting yourself. You might say, I don't want to do this anymore. And somehow, sometimes you back off. This was in 2015 when I was attending the WHO regional meeting with the IFMSA delegation. I had this moment where I was supposed to give a speech. Basically, it's a statement representing all medical students on what do they think and on what they see the future of medicine is. So you see this. Back in 2012, Dr. Khaled Hamadani was the first Omani medical student to attend the WHO meeting and represent the, represent the medical students in the WHO. I saw him. I wanted to be that. So in 2015, I've achieved my dream. In 2015, I represented 1.3 medical students. I was talking about the medical education and what is the future of it. And I was talking about the sustainable developmental goals that were adopted by the United Nations and that the world will be trying to implement for the next 15 years. That's the moment when I had the mixed emotion with excitement, joy, and fear. And that's also the moment where I was about to wet my pants. The medical students. The medical students and the members of the National Membership Organization. Now this picture is the, from the National General Assembly last, last year. And actually it was the last one we had. So many of these students, to me, are no longer just colleagues, are no longer just friends. They become to me more than a family. They are the people who would give you that push to go harder. They are the people that would make you go another mile. They are the people when you get hit and you feel the pain, you will stand again. Failure is not by not achieving your dreams and goals. Failure is by not trying and just trying to giving up. You just want to quit your dream. You just want to do zone out and just be away from everyone. But always remember to consult. Always to remember to reevaluate. Always remember 
that you need another opinion. This picture was taken last week. I know some of the guy who took it on Snapchat was right here, sitting in the back. OK. I was sitting with Dr. Han Al-Qadi, and I was asking him about his opinion. Should I quit one year of medicine just to work for the Federation? Now, it's no longer about achieving dreams. It's about self-satisfaction. I want to be in the International Federation on an international level, more than I am right now. I think I can do more. I think I can give more. Why is that? Because I want to change. Because I think medical students deserve better. I think medical students should have better education, should be more promoting public health to a, in, for order to have a better life and for order to achieve what the whole world is trying to do, is to live in a better place. But always remember that you always need to balance. You need to set your priorities. You need to have your goals. Your studies are your first priorities. And all the extracurricular activities are as important as your studies, but they have to be around your studies. Your study must be the drive that makes you work for this. Now, the problem with us is not just in Oman, but around also the GCC countries. We tend to be afraid of going out of our safe zone. We are afraid of taking something new, trying something different. Among the International Federation, only 0.3 citizens are from the GCC, are in the structure of the new leadership of the Federation. Why don't we have students from Oman representing Oman and as well being part of an international team? Why don't we have people who are desired and motivated to lead other countries? Why do we wait for other countries to take a step and lead? This is where we come in, and this is where we take a decision, and this is where we prove to ourselves that we can do it. My last message to you would be that, this is a picture that I took from Nobel Prize Museum in Sweden. How do you think your own legacy will be? This is the time where you architecture yourself. You are in a college, you are in a university, not just for the academic purpose. This is the time that you build yourself, this is the time that you gain the experience. This is the time that you get your skills. We all talk about communication, communication skills and courses and presentations about communication skills. Why don't you go out there, meet people from different kind, learn different accents, and try to communicate with different people? Why don't you think about medical education? You think a system is good in one country, so work for it to be better in your country or another country. I remember when Jordan medical students changed the whole curriculum because they saw something in the Federation which was really good and would benefit them, and then they changed the whole system in their country. Just remember you are what you do, and what you do, this country depends on. And the future Oman is you. Thank you very much.